Enjoy yourself. Let's sing and dance while we can. Come on, blow your mind. Yeah! Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Damn it! Why can't anything go right today? We're looking at Godzilla versus the Smog Monster. You will believe a giant lizard can fly. Well, possibly not. Godzilla! Last Godzilla movie we reviewed was King Kong vs Godzilla, in which he was a badass. But it's ten years later, and the series has veered towards Godzilla being A, a hero. Godzilla would really get angry if he saw this. And B, for kids. Godzilla, your favourite? This movie makes a lot of concessions to kids, not least the weird animated sequences. And let's have fun learning about the atom. When the atoms of a substance undergo nuclear fission, they create more atoms. On the other hand, there's also this spectacularly hallucinatory sequence in a nightclub. It's as if the filmmakers realised their target demographic was children and the stone. Either way, this is a weird movie. But it also has an environmental message. Hedras live in the chemicals we put in the sea. Godzilla is up against Hedera. That's just a name my son dreamed up for them. An alien who feeds on pollution, growing larger as it eats. While we continue to pollute the air, the monster will continue to get bigger than ever. Well, that suggests a pretty obvious solution. I'm afraid there's no stopping it. Really? You can't think of any way. Why don't we dry it? It's only sludge. Yeah, but what would it take to do that? Three million volts. The supply of electricity from the whole Kano area. That environmental message really doesn't seem to be landing. Maybe Godzilla can deal with the pollution. Again, that's creating a whole other environmental issue. So why complain about it? The moral of the movie is, pollution is bad, especially when alien monsters rock up. Down, do. Do. <laughs> but what are you going to do? I mean, you can't stop polluting any more than you can stop wailing. What did you say? That'd be crazy. Besides, that's not what the film is about. Godzilla's going to fight the Hedra. But if they start fighting, they'll smash up everything. Toho's business plan in a nutshell, but it raises issues. At least 35 people have been killed and 81 injured, and more than 300 buildings destroyed by these two giants. 300 buildings destroyed and only 35 dead? That's not a catastrophe, that's a fucking miracle! It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Because he's now the hero, Godzilla can't be responsible for too many deaths, but then you've got to ask, why is he here? Godzilla's coming to save us. Great! Except he is useless against Hedera. He repeatedly gets his ass handed to him. Admittedly, he does restart the army's electricity weapon that finally takes out Hedera. But firstly, he's the one who took out the power lines. And secondly, when your hero is reduced to the level of a pair of jump leads, you have a problem. Well, maybe. I'm not sure. I am. Never mind the complete lack of follow-through on the environmental stuff. Oh, I forgot. The problem here is that this is a Godzilla movie in which Godzilla is so superfluous to requirements that even his theme music sounds disappointed that he turned up. The only time he really puts the boot in is when Hedera is already down. And I'm sorry, but whatever those are, that's not cool. What Godzilla film should we review next? Let us know in the comments below. Click here to see more films, here to subscribe, and whatever you do, don't click down there. Don't go away,